Hi, I'm going to be talking about part three of your um, lab. And this is where we go from a single test of a slip to testing um, a slip with um, a multiple colorants. So for your first recipe, we were working with, um, I'm working with a cone 04 vitreous ongo. My, this is the ingredients, these were the amounts. I, I already did this, so they started out being 5% EPK, 15% OM4, 20% or 20 grams Glomax, but I now need to make 1,000 grams in this recipe, so I've added a zero to the end of each of those numbers, so instead of adding up to 100, it adds up to 1,000. So I want to go ahead and add those ingredients in, but it's really important that you understand the difference between um, a base glaze and a glaze that's designed to have a specific color. So this, in part um, one and two of this lab, I asked everyone to add cobalt carbonate 3% to your first test. That was 100 grams. But if I add cobalt carbonate to my base glaze, all my base glaze is going to be blue. So I absolutely need to cross that out and not add it. And then I need, again, I already did it, but I needed to add a zero to each one of those numbers so that my glaze or slip added up to 1,000 rather than 50. And then I can do 10 different tests on this one base recipe. So before you start this, you definitely want to have your mask and turn the ventilation on and you also want to have a one gallon ziploc bag so what you're going to do is add all your ingredients um, to this bag so starting with 50 grams of epk for me and then 150 grams of om4 all the way up to borax which is my last ingredient seal it and then shake it shake it shake it for a good three to five minutes until you can see that all, every ingredient is equally distributed in the bag. Now, if all of your ingredients are very white, you wanna probably um, still mix it up, but you're just gonna have to do it by time because you're not gonna be able to tell visually if, if you don't have, say, a dark gray ingredient in your, in your recipe. Okay, so I'm ready to start weighing out my material. I need to make a, a, some glaze tests this weekend for a project that I'm working on in my studio. So uh, I'm gonna actually take this time to work on my own work as well as give you this teaching video. So my recipe is a low fire alkaline based glaze. It only has four ingredients. It's something I've been using recently in some work. And so you could just imagine this is my um, gallon bag with a thousand grams, but instead it's a jar. So I have a whole lineup of um, containers of 10 total, and I'm going to be weighing out um, 100, oops, I gotta make sure I tear out my thing. I'm gonna be weighing out 100 grams in each of my 10 containers. This, you know, Doing this, you want to make sure you're all set and ready to go. The, the goal is to do it efficiently, correctly, and quickly. So make sure you're really organized with all the materials that you're going to need here. Your 10 containers, 10 lids, a Sharpie, a tape. You're going to want to have a, a selection of brushes for um, applying. You can have one brush, but then it's gonna, you're gonna have to stop after each um, time you apply your slip or your glaze and wash that brush. So I like to speed it up by having multiple brushes. And then I've already decided what I'm going to be putting in these pieces, these tests. I'm choosing to use as inspiration um, some tiles that Gio Ponti, a modernist architect and designer used. Um, he was the architect of the um, North Building at the Denver Art Museum. I'm going to use some of his tile colorants as my inspiration for my line blend. You can do any number of things, colors you love, you would love to use in your work. Just kind of grab five random um, oxide colorants or mason stain colorants and use them. Like the first one I'm using is this um, teal mason stain um, 
and I'm going to be using it in four different um, saturations. So a mason say normally would get like 10% of the base recipe. It added on to the 100 grams would be the, um, the amount you'd want of this to get it fully saturated in a slip. I kind of want, I know this is a really strong, powerful colorant, so I'm going to try it in very small increments going up to something larger like um, 5 grams or 5%. Or it's totally up to you. Just keep in mind that you, you want to use more colorant in a slip recipe of the same colorant to get the same color in a slip than you would in a glaze. And in your reader under the slip section, there's a chart that gives you a guideline for different colors that you might achieve and then um, the percentage of that colorant. So that's a good place to refer to. Don't forget, we also have lots and lots of mason stains and they are a manufactured ingredient that will come in any number of colors. So the, some of the colors that I'm trying today are, of course, this teal. I also have over here a couple of different blues and I'm going for a couple of really bright colors. So I have this um, US pigment stain called Blood Red and this one called Mango Yellow. Um, so those are that's where I'm starting out with my test. So I've already weighed out a series of containers, each with 100 grams of my base. I've already put out a series of tiles that where I'm going to be putting my test, applying my test to. I've already weighed out my first test, which is just 0.1% of, of the stain, so a very small amount. And I've actually already labeled my, my container, so I need to make sure I put it in the right container. So I have a little sh um, tape with a Sharpie. I've given myself enough information to know that this is the AB glaze with 0.1% teal mason stain. And now I want to test it at um, 0.5%. So I always want to make sure I tear out my, my container. 0.5 is not very much. So I'm going to be careful about how much I put in there. All right, I'm at 0.5. So come over here, make sure I put it in the right container. And then I want to do 1% for my next one. So here, just scooped up a little bit more. Oop, but I overdid it. These are numbers for the colorants need to be very exact. Otherwise, you're going to not be able to repeat your results. So here's my 1%. And as I said, I'm also going to do a, a 5%. Okay. I haven't made a label for that one yet, so I need to make sure I immediately pick up my Sharpie and my tape and label that container because you do not want to lose track of what you have going on and what you're planning on. You know, if you make a test but you don't label it correctly, the information is completely lost. So 6305 and 5%. Going to put it over here. I could go through and weigh out all my ingredients for all the, all the 10 tests in this line blend but I'm going to stop at four and just show you the next steps so this video doesn't get long and tedious. Um, I do want to point out the locations, of course, of these colorants that you're going to be using. So over here is where we have our oxide colorants like cobalt carbonate, copper carbonate, red iron oxide, nickel, all the mined um, heavy metal colorants that we use. Over here, are the mason stains and they are a manufactured ingredient and this is one of the colorants. So we also have color charts for the mason stains. I'll, I'll take you over to where they are so you can take a look at it. If you're going to use mason stains it's really helpful to refer to this chart on the wall that will allow you to see what you can expect your colorant to look like. Okay. So I have my 100 grams of my base. I have colorants added to these. So, and the nice thing is they're all based on the same color, so I don't have to worry about contaminating um, my brushes quite so much because it's all just increasing increments of the same uh, colorant. I'm just going to take my brush 
I added a few tablespoons of water and mix it up. It's very important that you get the right amount of rate ratio of water to dry ingredients so that you don't end up making a test that is too runny to apply to your tile. That, you know, and then you're going to get misinformation and it's not going to be helpful. So I'm just mix, I'm adding water and mixing to each one. And, uh, but when I mix, I tend to just use my brush that I'm going to be uh, using to apply the, the slip or the glaze to the tile. So I don't like the cloud of dust that came up there since I'm not wearing a mask because of, I'm gonna actually put a mask on because I'm not happy about that dust and I certainly don't wanna be breathing this material. So sorry if I get a little more muffled once I have my N95 mask on. Okay, so mixing another one. Leaving the, Oh, I'm supposed to be relieving the brush in, but I forgot to do that. Is that time? Okay, last one I'm going to be doing for this demonstration uh, is the is the five percent of the mason stain. Mixing that up roughly. That's a big chunk in there. I just got to try to mix that into the, the wet ingredients. Okay, so I have here a clean container. I have here two sieves. One is 40 mesh and one is 80 mesh. And I'm going to put the 40 mesh inside the 80 mesh. And that way I'm going to be um, sieving my piece, my slip or glaze through two sieves simultaneously. So it kind of just speeds up my, my job here. And then, um, so I'll take first my 1% of saturation of the teal mason stain, pop it in there, and then push it through the the first sieve and then push it through the second sieve nice and fast if you if you don't add quite enough water it does take significantly longer to sieve because it's just when the material is thicker it doesn't flow through but that doesn't mean you want to add too much water either so it's always a matter of finding the right balance so I'm gonna to have to go wash these out I'm lucky since I'm just playing with different saturations of this one glaze that I can, um, I don't have to be as careful about getting every last trace of that colorant out of the sieve. But normally I would spend a little bit more time at the sink. And when I move to these colorants, I'm certainly going to have to spend a lot more time cleaning out my sieve before I, before I test those glazes. So yeah, put it through the, the first sieve, put it through the second sieve, put it back in the original container. Try to, trying not to waste time. And then again, now we're back up to the one 1% saturation of this stain. It goes right through the first one. Takes a little more effort to get through the, the, the 80 mesh, which is the second one. Put it back in its original container. Okay, 
Okay, everything's cleaned out for my last saturation. Which is the 5%. Gonna mix it up in the container and make sure I have all the, there's nothing settled to the bottom. Come push it through the first one, push it through the second one. Put it back in the original container. So yeah, it's about efficiency, accuracy, but, but also speed. You don't wanna be, um, I don't want this to be taking forever. Okay, so now I have uh, four tiles here ready for application. So this is my 0.5% of the teal. I'm gonna put it on, put it down, flat. This is my 1%. So these tiles, I put them just right next to the container right now because they're not labeled. So. I don't want to lose track of which one's which. This is my 0.1%, so it doesn't even really look blue. It looks like the color of EPK, just sort of a buff color. And then of course my 5% is very saturated and it really looks, it really looks like it's blue. So it'll be interesting to see how, how blue that 0.1% comes out when, we, when I get these out of the kiln tomorrow. So I've got my three tiles, or four tiles. Now I'm gonna go back and add a second coat of this particular glaze on half of the tile. So I can see what it would be like if I put a thin coat on or put a slightly thicker coat on. So this is just like, I put them down at first because they were taking a little while, the, gla the glaze or slip was taking a while to dry and soak in, but now it's done that, so I can go back and add another coat. So, here we go. This is the point one that doesn't even look blue, and then this is my 5%, which looks very blue. All right, so now I need a sponge to wipe off the bottom, make sure I don't have any of my ingredient on the back side of my tiles. And okay, four tiles, they've got their the material applied, but they're not labeled. I could totally lose track of what, what's on them. So I'm gonna do just a really quick label. I'll go back and put more information on them after they come out of the kiln with a Sharpie. But right now I'm just gonna put AB, because that's my abbreviation for this, um, this particular uh, lime blend base. That's the name of the base. And so this one is 0.56305. That's all I'm putting on there. I will put the whole recipe on there later after it comes out of the kiln, just so that when I'm, if I find these tiles again in 10 years, I don't have to try to find the notes that tell me what the ingredients are. So this one is the 1%6305. This one's the 0.1%. Six three zero five, and I'm using a um, the red iron oxide wash right here because um, it stays really dark at um, at low fire temperatures, which is what I'm going to be testing with. And so AB again, and five uh, percent six three zero five. Um, all right, so those are ready there. They're all ready to go in the kiln. Now, if you're doing a slip test, you're gonna wanna find the glaze, oops. Um, you're gonna wanna find the glaze that corresponds to your temperature that you're firing to, the clear glaze. And you're gonna wanna put um, a little bit, 
put a little bit of clear glaze on the on the slip test so that you can see how the slip will look when it's fully saturated with glaze. But since I actually am doing a glaze line blend, I'm not going to do that. So my tiles now need to move over to a test kiln. I don't know if you're seeing this because my um, screen just kind of shut down, but I think you should be able to see it. So I'm going to put them over here in this uh, Paragon test kiln that is, is, resides in, in the um, in the glaze room. So the, for here, I want to make sure I turn on, I uh, sign up for the kiln here, put my name and the temperature I'm firing to, lift this up, load it in, and I, now I see there's actually something in there that I fired in May, that, so this kiln hasn't been used since May. Um, I'm going to turn on the, the ventilation because we always do that in this room so we're not um, breathing the excess fumes from the firing and then I'll program it to start. We've already talked about that, so I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. Uh, one other little detail of firing kilns and testing is you always wanna fire your, your test tiles upright, and I didn't put a base on these tiles because I find that it's really hard to store a lot of tiles when I do that, so what I do is I just make sure I use the side of the kiln and other little bricks and you know various um, things that are you know stilts that can go in the kiln to help me um, uh, to help me uh, hold my my tiles vertically so that they don't um, they're not firing flat like this they're firing up and what that allows me to see is are there materials that I'm using that are actually runny that I, and I need to know that all right thank you.